think I even called I even called you about it. Like, what do you recommend that I do? And he's like, it's kind of up to you. I'm like, okay. And I called one of her friends. You know, what should I do? And uh, she said, I probably wouldn't do it, but I just felt like, you know, I. I don't even want to know what I said, what I looked like on there, because I knew it. Some people said it just, it just made it look even worse after the fact, but... It, it didn't look good. I, I mean, obviously we can't say, oh, we knew right then he was lying, but I think we all watched it together and went, this might be bad. Yeah, I, mean, I had that feeling after I watched it. So I could kind of see it in your face. It's like I was just lying to more and more people, and it's just like I just. Do you have internet access here? No. So you don't just don't get into that trap of what trap? All that. Oh. The, the social media trap and all that. No, they don't. Ridiculous. They don't let you have social media here. Yeah. Like, um, I think some of the GP guys are getting like these little like tablets or something that are like you know the size of like a older iPhone or something. Mm. I think they can use like email, but I'm not. Sure. I'm not sure about like social media. No, definitely no social media. But like, I'm not sure about internet or not. But mm-hmm. this place is kind of like you know, like dead zone pie for phones, anyways. I would think. I don't know. We're getting service, which is weird. Yeah. I didn't think we would. Right here. Yeah, right in this maybe room. This, maybe this is kind of like a hub of yeah. computers. <laughs> yeah, that's this true. is the spot. Yeah. Computer room. You would hope they'd have some. Did you talk to um, Nikki afterwards? After all this happened? On the 13th. On the, yeah, 13th and the 14th. What, how, what was that conversation like? It was the 13th. It was kind of like, you know, it was more text and then maybe a phone call, like a, a phone call. And then she was just, she thought maybe she had, like, took off with the kids. Like, just, you know, because I, I was telling her I didn't know where they were and all that. And then the 14th, it, she kind of, like... I think she kind of thought something may have happened because they hadn't come back. Why do you say that she might have thought that? Her, you know, she kept asking me, like, some weird questions. Like, she kept asking, like, questions that only I would know, but she was testing to see if, like, it was actually me on the phone. Like, What do you mean? Like, she would ask, like, you know, like, what's my dog's name? Or, like, what do I, like, uh, what yoga studio do I go to? Or something like that. And just, like... Hmm. Like, I just answer like, like I'm, just, and then like another thing about I'm sure I'm not sure if this is you. And I'm just like okay. I, is this through text or is this through calls? Text. Oh, okay. So she wasn't hearing your voice. Okay. Yeah. Is it possible she thought you'd been arrested and we were on the phone? One, either Shanann had my phone or somebody else had my phone. Or right. Like maybe you know, maybe it was maybe she thought it was. You know, well, know. hopefully Shanann would know all the answers to those questions, right? No, 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 this is uh, Nikki asking me. Yeah, but oh. she, she's asking you your name, your dog, and what yoga studio, and yeah. like, wouldn't so she, she, know she that? Maybe she thought, you know, maybe I was with Shannon, that she was just trying to find out who she was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, some, some of the some of the conversation, like, on the 14th got a little weird. I think that's when she met with CBI or something, or FBI, I'm not sure who she met with first. So she talked to you after she met with? No. Nope. Oh, she That didn't. was, like, she had told me, like... This is the last time you'll probably hear from me. I'm going to stay at my friend Jim's place. All this is all going on. I should not contact her until this is this is done. She told me to delete everything. And I didn't delete everything. I just, just okay. I'm not sure why I didn't delete everything, but it probably helped you guys out a little bit. But she told you to delete everything. Delete all conversations. Did she tell you why? Said delete it. I don't think you can ever delete a text message. We're pretty good at getting deleted text messages. Did uh, when your dad came in, one of the first things you guys talked about, he said, you know, kind of quietly, I cheated on her, I cheated on Shannon or something. Your dad didn't know until that time. No, they had, when I was in North Carolina, on August six, when I spent most of the day with my parents and my sister and everybody, you know. They had, uh, I had told them, like, something like, you know, this, I don't think this is going to work, like, for it, with what happened with the, the nuts and everything, and they're not being able to see the kids, they're like, you know, 
this is the first time they had talked to me. And it pretty much. Oh, because you went three weeks or something, right? Yeah, because Shannon told me to call him while I was in at the beach just to smooth everything out. Because she was like, all right, whatever's going on in your head, you need to fix this. But she didn't want me to, she didn't want the kids to see him. She didn't want to see him. And then, like, when I did see him on August 6th, it was after I went and saw my grandmother. She's in a, in a nursing home. And um, she still wouldn't let, wouldn't go see my parents or anybody with the kids. So I just told her to leave me there. My dad, I can pick me up and, you know, spent the whole day there. I just, and they, they, they were, you know, they said they want to see the kids. They just don't know if they could ever, like, you know, just forgive Shan for everything that happened that day. I guess, I mean, I'm not sure, like, everything that was said that day when they had that argument, but apparently it was, like, a knockdown, drag out, like, bomb that went off in there. Pretty hurtful things. Yeah, I'm guessing so. And, you know, they, they just don't know, like, if they could ever forgive her or not. And I just, like, I I never told them about, like, you know, cheating on, cheating on her. Like, they, they even asked me, is there somebody else? Oh, did they really? Yeah. So I, they could kind of sense maybe something's going on. Yeah, because Nikki was texting me the entire time I was over there. Oh. Like, they could kind of see, like, I was texting somebody. Mm-hmm. But it was, like, they kind of, maybe they, maybe they kind of... Knew. Like, even like when I was in San Diego talking to my friend Mark, I told him about Nikki, but I didn't tell him like I was gonna meet up with her. Okay. I told, told him that you know I was trying to like I should have just told him right then. Maybe that would have helped me. I know maybe he had he had an instance where there was some girl coming after him and she he she was engaged and he ended up getting with her and then. They were together, and then she cheated on him. Is this before he was married or during? Uh, it was after. Okay. But like, he could have, you know, helped me, but I just, you know, I never told him the whole thing. But, you know, it was a lot further along than I wanted to do. That's interesting to think about, right? His dad could give him some good advice. Uh, yeah, everybody. Now, this is my friend Mark. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. When I was in San Diego. Oh, I got you. So you think you told Mark about that, hoping that he maybe question you about it? Or I was, I was, I was, because you know Mark, my best friend. You know, I grew up with him since I was like eight, nine years old. Yeah. So like, I, he had been married before, and it didn't work out. I guess they were stationed together or something like over in Korea. And uh, I was actually just kind of just came out with like the whole the whole story, like you know, like. I just told him my daughter was a girl at work that, you know, I've been talking to, but I, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just, just, just distancing myself from her, yeah. but that wasn't the case. Yeah. I was just letting it, you know, exponentially get worse. Right. And if I had told him, like, hey, you know, yeah. he would have been like, whoa, man, like, all right, take a step back and look. Yeah. Right. And, like, don't, like, fall into that trap, being you're going to be alone for five weeks. And there's, there's times I wish, you know, like, maybe Shannon didn't have to go away for five weeks. Maybe we all just went for one week. Yeah. And nothing would ever happen. Yeah. It's only, I mean, five weeks alone, that's the only reason, really, that was even almost even allowed to happen. There are quite a few people who would tell us, and who do tell us, we need to look into Nikki more, Nikki Kissinger. All the way from the extreme end of things being... Nikki's the one who ordered the hit. She was there. I'm in the basement. She was she there. Was, yeah. You know, so the, the extreme is she's the one who told Chris to do it. She's the real problem. All the way, that's the extreme side. And then all the way to, well, there were these texts where she was infatuated. She was in love. She was saying how good Chris was in the sack. And maybe we should look at her more. You know, what would you say to those people? Like, you know, she, she had her moments where I had to talk her, like, off a ledge kind of deal. What does that mean? Like, I guess after the fact, there was, like, videos of her that she was, like, recording herself because she was, like, bipolar or something. I never knew that. But there, it's, like, and she would get worked up about nothing. She would just, like, she came to my house once because I think it was, like, July July 4th. I, I didn't have to work that day. So I didn't, like, get up at, like, you know, 4 o'clock and go home. And Shannon called me, like, 10 times in a row. I didn't hear it because I was sleeping. And I was just like, and she was pissed. She was pissed. She was pissed. pissed. And like, I called her on outside, like, where are you at? Like, what? what are you doing? Like, I was like, I didn't have to work today. It's like, you called me at like, you know, five thirty. It's like, my kids want to talk to you at seven thirty. I'm like, like I was 
honestly, she's like, she just like, no, screw you, like, you know, like, I don't know where you're at, and I'm fine. And I went back inside, told me, like, I gotta go. And she was just like, okay, and you come back, and like, thought about it. So wait a minute, you kind of lost me there. Were you at Nikki's place when yeah. Shanann called you? Yeah. Okay, and so you were sleeping in her bed. Yeah, because I wasn't going to work that day, because I, I didn't okay. have to that day. Mm-hmm. Okay. The first holiday, I ran off, and, you know, she, Shanann was pissed, and, you know, I kind of pissed Nikki off, too, that I just, that I left, but I think that's when she, uh, I called Nikki later, and she was like, you know, like, she kind of realized that, you know, she'd always be, like, you know, the second, second, she said second fiddle. That's sure. right. Because that's how I probably would come back that day. Just, you know, I, I don't want to be anywhere else when Shan calls. She was already pissed. So, it was stuff like that where she would really, like, she would go, she, she said she would go on, like, uh, websites and look at, like, will a relationship work with somebody? Like, will a mistress work? With, will a mistress turn into a relationship? That's what Nikki was looking at? Yeah. She would tell you that? or She you told that? me that. Okay. Yeah, she said that she would go on websites and look at stuff like that. Just to, I was like, why do you even look at stuff like that? She's like, I just want to see what other people have experienced. But, like, so that confuses me, though, because I thought earlier you were saying she thought you were heading toward a divorce. So why was she looking at herself as this a mistress? Was, this was later on. Oh. Like, okay. you know, in August, like, okay. the first week of August, when I told her, like, you know, I had had that talk with her about separation. Uh-huh. That's when, like, she started looking at, like, apartments and stuff. But, like, during our July relationship type thing there. Oh, I see. That's when she was looking up, like, you know, you know it would actually work. Okay. And she, told, she told her friend Brittany about it, I guess. And Brittany told her not to do it, but she said she already made a decision. Okay. And so, are those people absolutely wrong about Nikki? She wasn't asking you to get rid of your family? No. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. And... No part of any of this was because she put it in your head or asked you to, or no, she never. I mean, this whole this whole relationship contributed to it, sure, but she never, it never, she okay. didn't want me to. I mean, was it ever like, I wish she didn't have kids, I want to have, you know, kids of my own with you? Like, uh, she wants, I mean, she never knew if she wanted to have kids, but she said that, you know, at one point she said, I'd like to give you a son. What, did she know that Shanann was pregnant with a boy? No. Did she know Shanann was pregnant? No. And why is that? You just didn't tell her? I didn't tell her. Like, because we had met. But Shanann put that on Facebook. That's, that's, like, that's how did she not see that? I don't know. Maybe she did and she just waited for me to tell her or she put it on her head. Can I ask you a question? A lot of people think you named me go after Nikki. So what was that Nico was actually named that Shanann liked. Okay. Shanann thought of that one? Yeah, I actually, I wanted to spell it like N-E-K-O. I thought it was like Nico that way. Mm-hmm. But she said N-I-C-O. And I thought it was like, something like Nico or something. Okay. Because Nico is, is more of like an Italian name. Italian, mm-hmm. yeah. So, and like, she did leave for, you know, my middle name and my dad and all that. But like, Nico is like, that's a name that she always liked. Did she name all the kids? Did she name Bella and Silas? Yeah, Bella, because so Italian means beautiful. Marie is mom's middle name. Celeste is her grandmother's name. Catherine's Shannon's middle name. Did you have any input in their names? I just don't know. I liked them. I was like, I was like, if we have, or like, if we had a third child, you know, I was gonna, maybe we could have like Lee in the middle name, but you know, like, you know, I knew like the girls' names. It was, you know, I, I love those names, so I was like, that's cool. Especially like with the, you know, you have little nicknames for them, you know, like Belle and Bella Bean and CC obviously. So it's good, but yeah, Nico was, yeah, it was good. Okay. Can we go back to the house on the 13th? So, um, at one point, right when you got back there, and Coonrod was there, Officer Coonrod and Nicole was there, mm-hmm. and then you went in the house and you were for about a minute or so before you let everybody in. Remember what you were doing in there at that time? I was, so I went into the garage. Right. And then I ran around and I opened the front door. Yeah. Opened the front door for it. Did everybody come in through the garage or the front door? Everybody came through the front door. Yeah, so I came in, I went in through there, and I came in and opened the front door, and I ran upstairs. And I just was like, 
and acting like I was looking around. Okay. Was that that's after everybody? Did you go around the house at all before you opened the front door? No, no I, didn't, oh. I didn't run around the house. I stayed down the bottom, okay. on the bottom floor, and then yeah. when I opened the door. Yeah, okay. That's curious. And I ran upstairs and everybody else, and that's when Nicole's, Nicole's son was mm-hmm. on the phone, and I was going from acting like I was walking through the house. Yeah. She then had her bra on. Was that normal that she was sleeping in her bra? Mm. Every once in a while. I mean, she just got home from the plane, so she didn't even take off her her makeup or anything. Maybe she was just that tired. But normally, I don't know. Did it not come off when you guys had sex? No? I don't think so. Sometimes she just, you know, she just keeps her shirt on and she doesn't want me to do anything. Just like, she wants what she wants. <laughs> What she wanted, that's what she wanted. Was it just missionary sex? Yep. And when she, when she, her final resting place, was that just naturally what she was wearing? You didn't change her or anything like that? Okay. Did you have to see any of that stuff? Pictures or anything? No. I asked not to. Okay. They said I could, I was like, no, I don't want. I, I, I've prayed for those hazmat workers that I'm, I'm sure it was hazmat, right? I had the you were part of it. Yeah. And like, we were all there. We were all there. I'm sorry. Guys, I, I never wanted to see it. I, I prayed for that. I'd rather have to be there. So I, I don't, I don't, I never wanted to know what what the aftermath was. And they, they, they said, like, you know, if this ever got, ever got like a preliminary, preliminary hearing, that I, I would have to see them just to be prepared and not have a reaction an initial an initial reaction but I was like I don't want to see do you feel like your lawyers were fair to you yeah yeah I mean they were all I mean they were my only human contact really yeah so they were, they were kind of like almost like a guidance counselor almost yeah did you feel like you were driving the bus though with your decisions you made yeah, or Yeah, I, mean, no? I was like, I, you know, there was a lot of things I didn't really know what was going on behind the scenes. Like, sure. maybe there was a lot of things they never told me. Like, you know, um, like stuff that came out, like, afterwards. Like, the whole Nicole, Nikki Kessinger article and Denver Post and all that kind of stuff. They told me, like, afterwards and everything. But it was, I always felt like anything I was telling them, they were, they were, they were going to do. Like, the whole taking the plea deal and everything I told them that's what I wanted to do and they you know they, they asked me like it seems like a hundred times are you sure you want to do this are you sure like once you sign this like um, I guess like uh, up until sentencing I had the time to like you know back out but like I, they always even before we walked in the court I'm like are you sure it's like yeah this is this is it like, okay they, ne- they never told me this is what you have to do They always just said, this is your decision, you know, like, if you want to take this farther, we're, you know, and John said he, he was ready, he had all kinds of motions written and all kinds of stuff that were, like, really creative, and because he'd never been in something like this before, and he was ready to fight, and I was just like, I, I didn't want you to have to do that. Not for me, not for, not for something that the story isn't, or isn't true. Because mm-hmm. it, it would just only got worse. Mm-hmm. For everybody, for all three of you, for everybody that was involved in it. Are you still glad you did? Yeah, I mean, I never, I never thought I'd be in prison the rest of my life. But like I, I don't want people to have to keep going through this every day of their lives, knowing that you know there's a trial hanging over their head. Or I mean, if it ever got that far, I don't know. Yeah. But like, I didn't want people to have to relive it every day. Did they have to ever see the pictures? Did say that again? Did they have to ever see the pictures? Frank and Sandy and all that? No. No, they never seen that. They saw some things. They didn't, they didn't see anything bad. Okay. Yeah. We shielded that from them. That's one thing. I just didn't want them to have to see anything or hear anybody talk about what anything or any part of it. Or like, you know, any, anybody bashed their daughter, you know? 
like anybody to ruin like you know to hear what you know some of my friends had a negative you know impact on her from her or like had a description of her that it, that they didn't, didn't match you know something like that I didn't want them to hear that either but like, I didn't want them, like you know anybody have to trash her memory like I wanted like them to know like she was you know she's a loving life she's beautiful she always helped everybody else all her friends her Lucas friends her like I just wanted I, I, didn't, I didn't want anybody to take away what she did we I tried just, to get you to say that that night I know, I know I but know. um do you remember that? I remember. I was just like... I know you obviously weren't ready to say that. I, I, I know. It's like, you know, like after my dad left, we both came in like, all right, we got most of the story. Let's get to the, the true story. I'm just like, I just wanted to bang my head against the table. But in the end, I think you did the right thing. And even though it's hard to hear, um, there's a lot of people who thank you for what you did. You know, I think your whole life has been thinking of others except for one brief moment. I think you really did think of others when you made that choice. So I personally thank you, right? Because it, it would have been hard for the three of us to go through about this hard and for everyone else about that hard, right? Yeah, it was anybody that was family or friends, right? And, you know, just exponentially harder for everybody. Yeah. yeah. I think you did the right thing. So you haven't told your parents what happened? You just told them I'm pleading guilty for a reason? Yeah, I've told them, like, on the phone, even, because they, they're still... You should fight it. You should get it. Uh, they've, they've got letters from, like, Australia, from England. I mean, of, like, the 35C in Colorado and stuff. Like, you know, improper counsel or something or like that. Counsel. Mm-hmm. Infective counsel. And, um, I mean, some of the stuff they've, you know, you know, they've said about, you know, the dry patch, how it's not, like, FDA approved, how it can alter somebody's mind. Like, um, uh, like... It was some kind of condition, but there's something else they call like CPSD, complex uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, something like that. Have been like some people from England have had it. It's like uh, they've been in an emotionally abusive relationship and stuff. Like that. I mean, just like you know, some of the some of the little subjects they put in there, like yeah, I can relate to it, but like it doesn't make up for the fact what happened. But like they've they've, they've got a lot of support from they've got a lot of hate mail, a lot of phone calls, a lot of like you know. Stuff like that, I wish they never happened. But they, you know, they, they get some support, which is good. But on the phone, they still think, you know, there's a chance that I could get out. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to ever think your kid's going away forever. Like, they, I mean, they, they you don't want to fathom that. They tell me to fight it, like, you know, you know they don't die every day, but in their, on their bad days. Yeah. They'll get a bad message or a bad letter, and then I'll just come her back. Is that more your mom or your dad? My mom. Yeah. She loses it a lot. Yeah. On the phone, my dad's usually trying to, you know, like, hey, don't talk about this stuff. I'm on the phone with Because it's just going to rile, it's going to rile you up, and it's going to make him go back to his cell, and he's going to just kind of think about that all mm-hmm. night. Right. And that, that's what happens a lot. Yeah. Would you ever want him to know what you're telling us today? I'd rather just tell them myself. Yeah. So they're coming. I think they're going to try to make a visit in, like, May or so. So they don't know. Do they still think that Shanann killed the person? They still believe that, even though I told them I play guilty for a reason. But they think that I was, their, their words, like, railroaded by really Yeah. Because they, you know, they felt like I, they, they pressured me to do it. And, to, do you feel like that? No. No. no they, they asked me plenty of times. This is like, you know, they want, they wanted to fight. Like, they were, if I said fight, they would have just, you know, yeah. gone and... Found their gloves. Yeah. Just went yeah. in there and did it. You know? Yeah, it's like, no, I just, I can't have you do that. So, Chris, you care about others deeply. I can tell. You worry about others. Um, and I've asked you, you know, a bunch of times today, but... You're not just telling us that you did it because you feel bad for Shanann's memory. You did it. Okay. I have to say, like, you know, after this was all over, you know, people would bring up, like, oh, my gosh, I bet you're going to find out that Chris, you know, used to torture animals and, you know, all this stuff. 
you can imagine, like, you know, hearing that someone's capable of that, what have they done in their past, those kinds of things. Can you think back to your past at all, like your childhood, and think about any other moments that maybe you felt this same rage? I mean, obviously you didn't do anything like that, but maybe felt that rage and, like, what would have triggered that or anything like that. Not really. I mean, I was always, like, somebody that tried to coax people down not to, like, if somebody wanted to fight somebody else. I think I got in a fight, like, when I was in third grade, but it was like, you know, we ripped each other's shirt when we crying. Mm-hmm. You know? It was, like, stupid. Mm-hmm. I was like, why did I, why did I do that? And, like, maybe that was, like, my only, like, bad thing I did in school. <laughs> so, I can't think did of Did you anything. feel it on the inside, whether you didn't act it out? Like, did you feel, like... Like, if someone bullied you at school or someone, whatever, like, would it still be inside you? Like, did you feel like that even though you didn't actually act on it? I don't believe because I was always, you know, I never really talked to many people. So I never, I mean, people knew who I was, but they didn't really, I mean, I never really spoke to many people. That's why I never had a girlfriend in high school. I mean, I was always kind of, like, just fine under the radar. Did you feel like you had low self-esteem? I won't say low self-esteem. It was just like I didn't want to be. I didn't want to be part of like a group or a clique. I just like you know. I had a couple friends. And sat at the lunch table with them, and, or sat out. In, they called like the fish pond area, and you know, just chilled out there. And I didn't really want a whole lot of friends. It was kind of like just close knit. I just wasn't out there. I mean, like I said, people knew who I was, but it wasn't a matter of like I was popular or anything. Mm-hmm. Can you attribute that to anything in your childhood? Why you were uh, like my that? sister was always the, the popular one. Uh-huh. She was more like my mom, like more like outgoing and like me and my grandma would always sit outside in middle school waiting for her to come out and pick her up and she'd always be the last one out. She'd talk to everybody and all and my grandma was always like, Where is she at? Does she know you're waiting? But you know, it's 